Hi, this is your host of the Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Adi Galwan, CEO and co-founder of SPDB. Adi, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Pleasure being here. And this is the first time we are talking to each other. So I would love to know a bit about the company because you are also a co-founder. So let's start with some of the basics that what problem you saw in the market which you wanted to solve that led to co-creation of this company. Okay, so it started with our own experience of trying to embed a storage engine, which is a software layer that actually connects any media um, with the applications that manage data. Uh, every application that manage data, whether it's application cybersecurity, streaming, database, uh, storage, it runs with a software layer that determines how the data is written to the underlying media. And this part is called storage engine. Not many people know about it, but it's always there. And uh, my co-founders and me, Khilik and Mike, um, were the chief scientist and chief architect of a uh, storage unicorn. And they uh, were in need to embed a storage engine to manage the metadata. And they took the most prevalent uh, uh, storage engine in the market called RocksDB. It's the brainchild of Facebook. And they embedded it in the storage. and. Uh, they found out that it uh, it's working actually great in small data sizes, but not really uh, as expected in large data sizes. And and they tried uh, to do something about it. And uh, when they looked inside, they saw that uh, the whole storage engine market is actually made of architectures that are not built to scale. So uh, we decided to create the next generation storage engine to actually enable uh, the data scaling in applications. And that's what we're doing in SpeedyB. What is storage engine? And if you look at, look at today's modern cloud native, cloud-centric world where <laughs> data is everywhere, you know, that's what we are not only generating, but also consuming. So as to also understand the importance of storage engines. When you look at the data stack, you're looking at the application or the user first, he's talking to a certain application it can be any given application. And the application, in order to store data, it will use um, a sort of a database of any kind. It can be streaming, OLTP, analytics database, whatever database or um, data structure to manage the data. Underneath this data structure is a storage engine. It can be an LSM tree or B tree based or whatever. And then the underlying storage that we all know can be S3, can be file system, can be any storage vendor. So the, the storage engine is there and it determines uh, how the data is going to be put on the underlying media. And um, the reason people don't know or didn't know till a couple of years ago what storage engine is, is because the main, the main goal of storage engine is to manage the metadata. Metadata is actually the data about the data and you need to access it very, very fast. It usually resides in the memory, so you can actually um, access it very fast, and it gives you actually the pointers or the addresses of the actual data. Um, what happened in the past decade is that uh, the kind of data we're dealing with in the world has changed. The connected devices, the IoT, actually made uh, data much more complex than it was before. Now the ratio between metadata and data itself is not like a one to thousand, but more like one to one or one to two or one to 10. And sometimes the opposite, the metadata is much larger than the data itself. So um, now the metadata is growing exponentially and it cannot reside in the memory. So you cannot access it very fast. And when you cannot access the metadata very fast, um, it actually creates the butterfly effect and you cannot access the data fast. So the users actually get inferior service from the applications. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to build a new data structure that will enable the metadata to go out of the cache to the media and yet uh, being able to provide uh, very fast access to the data. Can you also talk a bit about the evolution of me metadata with the evolution of data engine and storage technologies as well? Because 
uh, when you talk about <laughs> the fact is you know, when uh, Facebook was created, we lived in a different world than we are living today. Uh, not only we are creating huge amount of data, but the way and from where we are consuming is also, and the kind of data we are creating is also different. Plus, what value does the data have without metadata? That is also very important to understand. That's why you're saying, you know, that sometimes metadata is more than data. So let's talk about these aspects so that we can also understand the, the problem area that is there that comes with, you know, metadata. Great question. Okay, so let's take um, 20 years back. When you looked um, about data, you were looking about fi uh, at files, pictures, videos, and um, the, the, the legacy data that would be in megabytes, gigabytes, or terabytes um, per piece. And the metadata was actually uh, the information about the data, which would normally be a couple of bytes, maybe tens of bytes, or mostly kilobytes. Um, in, in the recent years, um, every, everything out there actually generates data the location, the temperature, um, where you are, what you did. Every smartphone is creating tons of metadata and tons of data. And what you see around the world is, is that um, the data we're dealing with now is not big pictures or, or big videos or big files. It's more of JSON files and small, tiny files that comes from censoring watches, phones, whatever. Any device uh, today creates data and metadata so and imagine that every piece of small data contains metadata sometimes the metadata is the description of the data which may be much larger than the data itself so if 20 years ago a few bytes of metadata could actually manage terabyte of data nowadays you may have megabytes of metadata or kilobytes of metadata um, managing a few bytes of data. So the whole structure of data has changed. And um, what um, the industry overlooked is that the technologies to manage those data. Now, if you look at data, storage, file system, object, all these kinds of platform, they can store huge amounts of data. There is no problem. There is no scalability problem. Look at S3 of Amazon it really stores um, exabytes of data with no problem. Uh, but what about the metadata? The metadata now is growing much bigger than the data itself. And the key thing about the relationship between metadata and data is, is that the information about the data, where it's located, uh, when it was generated, and things you need to know about the data in order to access it, they're in the metadata. So if you want to access any data, you really need to access the metadata first, and you need to do it very, very fast. Now, if there are no um, adequate tools to manage the metadata, and you can act, it will take you more time to access the metadata, imagine what happens to the data itself. You'll need another hop that will take you much more time, and the user will suffer. So um, let's talk about Facebook. They are actually uh, the ones um, who developed RocksDB, which is the most prevalent storage engine in the market today, with a new technology called LSM trees. These guys, um, their data was mainly pictures. So RocksDB was actually designed to manage small metadata of large data. And when Facebook scaled and their data changed as well, what they did is they divided the, to the, the problem into many small pieces so now they make sure that the amount of metadata managed by the storage engine is not more than a couple of tens of gigabytes, and they shard the problem. Now, Facebook, they have endless resources. That's not a problem. But normal customers who actually use this RocksDB, they cannot afford thousands and tens, tens of thousands of shards. So they, they need to store the data in relatively um, concentrated place. And they suffer because the metadata now is very, very big. It's not divided in, into many pieces. And accessing the data now goes through the metadata, which takes time, and they suffer. So they need to pay more resources. It takes them more time, and things simply take longer, and their users uh, suffer.
And that's uh, their biggest problem. Once again, thanks for explaining that in detail. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to talk about. Number one, as you said, you know, Facebook has all the resources, but other companies, you know, they don't have. So I want to talk about a couple of things. Number one is that who, um, who consume, uh, I would assume like any company which creates any kind of data, you know, through sensors or whatever it is, that is the customer. Uh, that's number one. Number two is that when we look at teams within organizations, uh, whose problem is to deal with metadata because we in these days you know we look at unicorn developers or the you know the silos are breaking down the fact is there are still silos but uh, let's talk about these two aspects first of all what kind of companies deal with it and within those companies what kind of teams deal with metadata and whose problem is it there yeah so it's like asking who is suffering from air pollution everybody everything around us is data and i don't think I know any technology company that doesn't rely on the data. Data is the new oil. And if you are able to store and an analyze data and get insights, you are stronger than you were before and you can actually make smart business decisions. When you think about the leading companies in the world, their advantage over anyone else is the ability to analyze data to know where the user are, to know what their preferences are, and to know what they do in order to offer them better service. Now, the key to this thing is metadata. And if you want to analyze fast, you need to access the data very, very fast and analyze it very fast. You cannot do it if you don't access the metadata very fast. So the first access to any data of any system out there is to the metadata. If the metadata is very small and it resides in the memory, great but the data is exploding. It's growing faster and faster, and most of the systems cannot keep the data in the memory. And customers do not want to keep all the data in the memory because memory is very, very expensive. So they need new technologies to manage the metadata efficiently. And that's what we are trying to build. If you look at the market, the storage engine market is dominated by huge companies like Google, Facebook, um, um, Apple, Oracle, we want to build the next generation storage engine that will actually allow any company out there to scale their data and manage the metadata efficiently without paying a lot of money. Excellent. Once again, thank you. Uh, but there's one more question that I, uh, second part of the question was that within IT or within teams, within an organization, whose problem it becomes uh, to deal with the uh, data? Because not every company, as you said, they can afford to have data scientists or, you know, uh, those kind of engineers on their team. So whose problem is that? Because that will lead to the second point that would be how do you actually help them? So the guys who are building the data systems, data architects, system architects, um, developers who are developing applications, that need to manage data, they need to embed a storage engine that will do it right. So anyone who has access to the architecture of the application, um, of the infrastructure, DBAs, DevOps, um, almost everyone who uh, is building or is working with a data system um, actually depends on it. Um, the, the ones who are suffering are eventually the users. So. Every database out there is working with a certain storage engine that uh, mostly is the bottleneck. It's amazing, but the hugest database you can think of, if the data engine, which is a small, thin layer inside them, if it doesn't work well, it will create the worst performance problems. Now, how do we help them? Um, if you are a user, you are suffering from a problem that we are trying to solve. We're trying to offer those programmers, those architects, those vendors, application vendors, and database vendors to use our storage engine and to allow them to design smarter, bigger systems that will work faster and more efficiently. So um, we're trying to build something that will work faster, will scale better, and will do it with less resources. And we think uh, that we're on the right path. We've built here great technology that we think uh, is able to change the way metadata is being managed in, in the world. And uh, our next big thing is that we are going open source very soon. So we realized that uh, if we will um, share our technology with the users, with the developers, and build a huge community around it, it will enable us direct conversations and path to the developers and enable them to work with us to build 
smarter systems. So open source, this is our next big thing. And we, we really hope we can uh, be the de facto next uh, generation storage engine. We will have an open source version that is going to be with Apache license, totally uh, uh, permissive. And we are going to have an enterprise commercial version that will enable much more for the production customers. So this is actually an open core model where the open is uh, open and valid and um, and hopefully will be used by all the developers in their testing uh, and environments. And when you want to go into the production, you know, commercial version will have uh, more tools that, are, um, that will enable you uh, to go into production, support services, and much more scalability um, for your system. We started with the most prevalent storage engine in the market, which is RocksDB. Today, we provide all RocksDB users a drop-in replace uh, for the RocksDB. If they change, it's 30 minutes, uh, sorry, 30 seconds work, um, simple drop-in replace, no single line of code change, and uh, the magic happens after you change. So all RocksDB customers, we're here for you. Excellent. Adi, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, not only talk about the work that you folks are doing, but also talk about the larger problem which is there. And I would love to have you back on the show, as I said, you know, whenever the open source story is there. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Happy to come again. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure.